Welcome back to another episode of Satisfactory in our Mega Factory 2.0 series. And on this episode, we're going to be taking these limestone deposits and we're going to be turning them into this concrete quarry mega factory dealing with thousands of limestone and turning them into concrete production. So sit back, relax, and let's jump into it. All right, here we are looking at our progress board for our Mega Factory 2.0. And we've already finished getting all of our copper ingots all together. We've already finished getting all of our iron ingots together. Let's look at the next raw material slide. So here we are in raw materials. We've got our iron completed. We have our copper completed. Limestone is the next one we've got to do, but not all the limestone is going to get processed. Some of it needs to be used as raw limestone um, combined with some quartz crystal to be able to make uh, cheap silica. So we're going to need about two lines. Like in total, we need um, just about uh, 7,700 limestone. We need uh, just about 1,300 of it is going to be uh, for making the cheap silica. And then there's like over 6,300 that's going to be needed for um, making our concrete. So here's the thing for this to work out is I'm going to overproduce a little bit because I want to have the two full dedicated lines of 780. So that's going to be 1560. That's going to go to our cheap silica production line. And then since we need just over 6,300 for our concrete well that's more than uh more than eight lines that we need so we're going to say nine dedicated lines of 780 items per minute of limestone going to our concrete so that's what we're going to do is we're going to go for the goal of 11 lines of limestone at 780 items per minute that's going to work out to 8580 per minute. So we're going to be overproducing, but we're overproducing on all of our other factories anyway right now. This is kind of a trend that's been going on with this mega factory. This gives us a little bit of room of flexibility in case there was any miscalculations based off the spreadsheet. So our goal on this one is to have 8580 of limestone of which 1560 that is going to stay as limestone and then we'll also be building our concrete manufacturing plant so we're going to gather up all the limestone we're going to make our concrete and move on from there so let's have a look at our map and see what's going to be our best location so here's the map that I grabbed from satisfactorycalculator.com that shows our resource nodes for limestone. And as we can see in the northwest corner, there is actually a fairly high concentration of pure limestone nodes. There's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them right there that we're gonna be able to get easy 780 items per minute. That means we'll only need a few of the normal nodes there to get us our extra two lines that we want so we're going to be focusing then on this northwest corner of the map for building our concrete quarry and uh, our limestone quarry that we're going to have out there so let's go and check out where that is and what the terrain is like okay so here we are in the area where we're going to be looking for our limestone that we want to pull from and if we look at the map here we're like right in the heart of where all these pure nodes are. I know that there's some located up this way, some over here, and it kind of loops along this way. And then down this side is where the normal nodes are that we'll be pulling a few from. So, um, but now we just got to find a location where we could bring all those materials in. And that looks like a blue power slug that we're going to whip down here and grab real quick. Hello, power slug. I am in peaceful mode right now because I got sick and tired of dealing with having to fight monsters all the time. Oh look, another blue power slug. We're going to need these for all of the nuclear reactors that we're going to be having. Um, there's 67 nuclear reactors that are going to be built, or nuclear power plants, um, that are 250% overclocked. So that's going to be a ton of power shards that we're going to need to be able to 
those all overclocked to be able to produce our, I think it's like 500 gigawatts of power that we're going to be making. So, But this central area right around here might be our best bet for building. If we do a quick scan for limestone out here, we should have some pretty quick hits here of limestone. There's some there. There's some over there. There's a bunch that way. So we've got limestone nodes all over the place here that we're going to be able to pull from and be able to get all the raw materials and raw concrete that we're going to need. So um, nine lines are going to be dedicated to the concrete plant. And then there'll be two lines that will be left uh, set aside that will be used for our cheap silica plant when we get to making that. So um, now to matter, let's gather up some materials and uh, start bringing in these lines. There's going to be 11 full 780 item per minute lines of limestone that we need to pull into here. So let's see what that's going to start looking like. So I'm out here trying to map up these pure node locations and I'm standing here on one of these right now that I've marked and, and put on the map here. And if I scan, there's the one I'm on three meters away, but then there's another one that's like 51 meters this way. But I don't see it. I think it's... I think it's inside this rock here. Because it's saying there should be one right here. Right here, right this spot right here, there's supposed to be a limestone node, a pure limestone node at that. But I don't see one. I'm going to build, I'm going to see what I can do here. I'm going to, uh, we're going to throw down a work, equipment workshop, just kind of anywhere here right now. And we're going to click in here and I'm going to make a couple of port portable miners. One, two, and we'll make a few of them because uh, we'll put a Mark III miner down. I'm going to see if it'll actually let me... Did I get three? Yes, I did. I'm going to let me see if it'll let me place a Mark III miner here. It does. Well, holy smokes. Okay, so how low can I go with a foundation here? that it will still let me place. And I'm just, I want to see where the world grid is. That's why I've clicked those down in place like that. And it still lets me place it down. Okay, I can live with this. So yeah, there was a pure node here. If we look at this, yeah, it's 480 items per minute. 720. We can mark this up to 780 now. There is a pure node here. So that's good to know. On the map, here we are in this location right out here. There's two nodes here. This one is actually underground and you can't really see it, but you can click on it and select it. So um, if you guys are in the hunt for a pure node, I thought this was an interesting little graphical glitch to show you here is that this pure node is actually underground, but it is still accessible and you can grab it. I've been able to track down all of our limestone nodes and I have pathways now built that we're going to use to transport all of these uh, in one big bus back to where our concrete manufacturer is going to be. And this is the first time I've actually used like proper curves that go from grid alignment over to grid alignment as we've been building this to tie all of these nodes together and uh, it just makes it look a lot a lot uh, a lot more like a, an actual roadway or a busway or supply line having those curves in there so it's worked out fairly well so there was a couple of nodes over that way there's three nodes that we're gathering from uh, that feed in off this line here there's um, one just over there one right there and then this one here they all come in i got another curve line that we built through there and bit by bit it all makes its way back over to this far side here we've got another no right here we're pulling from another one right here that's just a straight shot out and then there's two more way off in the distance uh, another one that's like midway out and then these here 
They all come together to get us our 11 lines of 780 items per minute of concrete, so or of limestone, of which two of those lines are going to be used for the silica that we've got to be making. So, um, auto save time. The auto saves are really starting to take a long time as this factory gets built up and more and more things are getting built. So, out here, this is where our bus line will all come down. All of our limestone will shoot out this way into i haven't decided yet whether i'm going to go with um constructors just making regular concrete or if i'm going to go with refineries and make wet concrete wet concrete will end up making more concrete for me but i think i've got it planned out right now that constructors are kind of the best way to go for how much concrete i need so nine of these lines are going to be run for making concrete and then two will be separated off for the silica production so that's where we're at right now. Now I'm going to get everything all tied together and get the buses and everything feeding to this point so that we can actually start building the concrete factory. I now have all of the logistics done for gathering up our limestone. I haven't powered up the mining, uh, the miners yet, just because I'm, you know, wanted to get everything all laid out here and show you guys how the buses are set up before all the materials start flying down. But as you can see, we've got all of the materials that come gathered up here. Our bus um, at its highest point here gets four wide, two wide, or four high, two wide. And then um, it all will end up flattening out as we approach where our constructors are going to be set up at. And I think I'm going to go with constructors. I think that's, uh, that's the, the way I'm going to go rather than doing refineries for making wet concrete. Because, I mean, I've already laid a ton of refineries. I want to... I want to change it up a little bit and lay something else other than refineries out here. So constructors it is to be able to, we'll take nine of these lines to make our concrete. And then the other two will be available for making cheap silica. So this is what we've got for our loadout bus. Now it's a matter of just powering up all of the Mark III miners out there. They're all overclocked. They're all ready to go. We have a merger assembly here where we're combining three normal nodes to be able to get two um two solid 780 items per minute lines out of this so we've got a feed coming in here and then we have another feed that's coming up into a splitter it splits down and goes this way splits up and goes that way and then we have another feed that's coming in here that ends up getting it to both lines are 780 items per minute so that's where we're at right now now it's a matter of powering them up and let's start placing some constructors out here to see how it's going to look. All right, here we are with our limestone all coming down into what I'm going to start calling this the concrete quarry. Um, I think that's what this, this factory is going to be called. We've got our two limestone lines here at 780 items per minute. Those are going to be used for making cheap silica. They're set aside for right now. And then we have our nine uh, lines of 780 items per minute that are feeding into the factory. So let's head in the doors and have a look around. So each line here is feeding into its own floor of this structure for making concrete. So we have 780 items per minute that are coming in, divided amongst 17 constructors that are here, which does leave a remainder of 15 items per minute of limestone that we are then combining with two other floors to merge together because if we look at the recipe for this it takes 45 limestone per minute to be able to make 15 concrete per minute so this is one third of what a constructor is required so with three floors combined together um, we end up with that extra constructor the other thing too with that is as we are running with three lines those three lines combined together of 780 items going in equals one line coming out at 780 concrete per minute off of 52 total constructors. So we're taking our three or, or sorry, our nine lines of limestone here and we are condensing that down into three full production lines of concrete at 780 items per minute. So basically what I've done here is, yeah, I've got the constructors laid out here. Everything all feeds into a splitter with a smart splitter at the end that handles our overflow. 
We threw in a little bit of uh, ceiling lit lighting in here just to give this a little bit of a brighter look inside because it can get a little bit dark. And then this just rinse and repeats. We come up to the next floor. It does the exact same thing. The only difference is, is I'm feeding the excess line is coming up and hitting a merger here and merging with the excess of this one so that this line here becomes 30 items per minute going up. And then we hit the next floor. We have the exact same thing coming down here to a smart splitter. The excess is feeding into this merger. We have our 30 items per minute feeding into here as well. And then we're taking the 45 minute or 45 items per minute out and into our extra constructor that's on this floor. So every third floor actually has 18 constructors in it, which then works out to a total of 52 equal constructors that are producing enough to make one line of concrete coming out. And we're just, we're zigzagging this line back. So um, our concrete line from this side, it comes out on this end and shoots all the way down here, gathering all of the items, merging them all together down each side. And then we elevator it up to the next floor and it runs along, collecting everything all together, merging it all together. We come down to this end merges again goes up on an elevator and now we're merging with our third floor all combined to then give us our output line of 780 items per minute that's dropping down we rinse and repeat this three times in total for all nine of our limestone lines that are feeding in and then at the top floor here we've got a little bit of a skylight in here and we'll show you the building from the outside once we've got it all once we've had a good look at this so um yeah that's how we're dealing with all of our our concrete and you get a good view of everything that's all coming in from the outside world out here you can see our car our limestone lines all feeding in we've got some feeding off from that dir that direction and then it all splits off nicely to this bus that's coming down here with all of the items that are feeding in and then we got a little bit of a spaghetti mash up here as we're feeding these lines up into their various floors to be able to start producing concrete so from the outside let's have a look at this build it's not too much to look at but here we are with the concrete quarry i threw a radio tower up on the top of it because it just kind of finished it off nicely we threw a bunch of glass on it. I still got to finish this back wall here um, with some more glass. I ran out of um, silica for making the glass. So I got to run over and pick some more up. But this is where we are. This is our finished build, basically finished build for our concrete quarry. So I think it's turned out okay. It's uh, it's it's a little a different take on, on dealing with how to build these concrete all in, an, in a tower structure like this so uh feel free to leave a comment let me know what you think of this structure and how it's turned out um with that said i think we've kind of reached the end of this episode of us dealing with our limestone line and all of our concrete that we've got coming out of here and then it's just sitting on an export side out here for wherever it'll end up getting used in the future but that is where we are at. So what are we going to be dealing with next time? Next time, looking at our power structure here, our max power consumption is significantly higher than our capacity for power. Now, granted, I don't have everything turned on right now, so our power usage is quite low. But if I was to turn everything on and have it running, we'd be struggling for power. So now... I think we're going to shift gears a little bit into oil. We're going to go out. We're going to find a whole pile of a whole pile of oil nodes that are available to us. And we're going to make all of the plastic and rubber that we need. And then all that heavy oil residue that comes off that line, we're going to put into a, a new fuel power plant to be able to boost our power up until we can start building our nuclear power plant. So that's what we're gonna be kind of focusing on right now. I was gonna do coal power, but 
I'm going to need the coal for other things, and it's not as efficient as what we could be doing with the oil. So we're going to go find a whole bunch of oil nodes, and that's what our plan is for the next episode. So with that said, reach down, hit that like button on this video if you could please. Again, you know, leave a comment. Let me know what you're thinking of the Mega Factory so far. We've got our concrete quarry, our copper production is way over on the far side our iron production is way over on the far side and next we're going to be dealing with some oil production so subscribe if you are new to the channel uh ring that notification bell so you can be notified when i've uploaded a new video um also feel free to follow me over on instagram and twitter at terrace dwdc for any new updates as I put out new videos because we all know how YouTube notifications are. So with that all said, you guys have a good one and we will see you in the next episode.